Hi, I'm Bobby Halton, and we're on the road at FDIC 2008, and we're here today with the superintendent of the National Fire Academy, Dr. Dennis O'Neill. Doc, Good. how are you? Good really you, well, brother. thank you, sir. Thanks for coming in. Thanks for stepping Wouldn't in for it. Director Cade, and you were here. You're going to teach anyway. Yep, I have a I had a class up. What a great great show you got, Bobby. The place is rocking and rolling. I appreciate you that. you got to stand sideways before so you can get down an aisle. I've never seen a show this crowded. Great job. <laughs> well, thank you, Doc. I appreciate that. What did you do your class on this year? It's kind of like a future view, kind yeah. of like looking down the road. We're looking at the next uh, twenty to forty years in the fire service. Uh, there's some big changes coming up. Um, there's I, I think for the fire service particularly is the changes in construction methods and and this it, the uh, hydrocarbon plastics that are being used now to, to uh, furnish rooms, to build buildings, and um, they, they produce a tremendous amount of heat. As you know, hydrocarbon fuels are about 16,000 BTUs a pound, and carbohydrate fuels wood is about 8,000 BTUs per pound. Now, I don't know what it's like anymore, but when I was a young firefighter, it was always this BTU versus GPM. Still is, Doc. Still is good, I'm glad. Uh, and we're not changing the GPM part of that equation. The, the uh, BTU part of that equation is changing. So that, that's one thing I'm very concerned about. The second is that the fire service had better be prepared for the fact that we're going to be on video camera. The average American, and these data are about two years old, Bobby, the average American today is on video camera about eight times a day. I suspect that that data is probably up around 20 times a day. So when you have somebody that's uh, at a fire and you're doing something wrong, maybe you're not wearing your PPE or uh, you're not in the right position as a command, uh, incident commander, you better be prepared for the fact that somebody's out in the audience videotaping everything you do. And if something goes south, a picture's worth a thousand words. And uh, the thing that's even scarier than that, and I was down at Gordon Graham, you had Gordon Graham speaking yesterday, and he was great, I, I love him. And uh, anyway, he said that there are currently 23 incident commanders under criminal indictment for charges against them for actions at fires. Mm -hmm. The third thing that we're dealing with in the future, and, and the baby boom generation begins turning 62, or began turning 62 in January. Now, I'm going to break your heart. Farrah Fawcett is 62. Still have her poster. <laughs> yeah, okay. But that generation is 78 million strong. Right. And out of a population of 300 million people, we know three things about senior citizens. They're the high-risk group for accidents, they're the high-risk group for fires, and they're the high-demand group for EMS. And that's going to change the work that the men and women in the fire emergency services are doing in ways we can't even conceive of. Uh, they're changing their housing patterns. They're moving into different kinds of housing uh, where it's, um, it's a continuum from independent living to assisted living to full care living. And then they sell the apartment and they go through this whole thing. Uh, they're using lightweight construction. They're, they're doing all of those kinds of things. But my concern as a superintendent is the fact that in a disaster, a flood, an uh, earthquake, a hurricane, these people are almost incapable of self-care. Mm -hmm. They can only take care of themselves for a couple of days, and they're going to be calling the fire service for help. To and it's going to be evacuation issues. A lot well, of these folks don't if drive. You, exactly. And environmental issues. When the electricity goes out and they can't keep warm in the wintertime or cool in the summertime, they're the most vulnerable. So their medications, how you know, to, to survive every day. So uh, these are things that the fire and emergency services are going to be facing over the next 40 years, and that's why it's a great place for them to come to FDIC and learn this stuff. Well, I know we, we've all read uh, Friedman's book on uh, the world's flat. flat. You know, he kind of gave us the heads up. I think he may have had it wrong, though. I think the world is almost convex. <laughs> or maybe it's con con concave. concave because it really seems like everything's just colliding. And when you talk about the fire service, and I think where firefighters and uh, fire service providers in particular have to understand is that for us it's opportunities. For us it's an opportunity to showcase the things we've been doing so far, but we've been doing really nominally. Mm -hmm. uh, emergency medical care. How many cities provide emergency medical care where the fire service responds first, stabilizes the incident, and it hands them off to a private provider? Right. Uh, they need to augment, and I'm not saying to destroy those relationships, but mm -hmm. augment those relationships, maybe uh, start to share those responsibilities and talents a little more, spread that responsibility around a little more. And now we have all this electronic capability, you know, scanners, uh, you know, barcoding for health information. Mm -hmm. We can cut the amount of time down 
that we do for patient care by having records which are updated electronically, which are retrievable, either Bluetooth or the bar scans, and that saves those medics seconds on those scenes and gives them more accurate information, mm -hmm. which can be critical. You know, there's, a, there's an upside and a downside to living a long time. Yeah. You know, the upside is that you've lived a long time, and the downside is that you've lived a long time. <laughs> and, I, yeah. you know, and, and it's going to be an issue. Yeah. It's really going to be an issue. And it, it also is an issue when we talk about the fire service. Because you know, it's an interesting statistic, and John Norman and I were talking about it last night. When we look at our heart attacks, 50% of the heart attacks that happen to firefighters happen to people who are either over 62 years of age or had significant previous arterial sclerotic incidents or disease. Um, that's an issue. I mean, let me, let me give you the, the, uh, the, the man that did that research is a uh, guy named Dr. Stephanos Kales from Harvard Medical School. He's a professor of, of medicine at Harvard. And uh, he's been down at the National Fire Academy, and we've had some discussions, and, and he's given me all that. I hate to tell you this, Bobby, but we're both too old and too out of shape to fight fires. I'm not doing it. It's, it's, not, over 50, it's not over 60, it's over 50. Hmm. And what Kales found out, that the most frequent or most accurate predictor of a heart attack at a line of duty death heart attack is previously known, diagnosed and treated heart disease. Mm -hmm. Bypass, stent, you're under medication for high cholesterol, okay? You are 35 times more likely to die mm -hmm. at a fire if you've got one of those three things. Okay? Yet, yet how many men in America today are out and there? And women. <laughs> and women are, are out there today doing exactly that. Yeah. Now. Uh, the, a couple of other interesting statistics. You're 12 times more likely to die of a heart attack at a fire for untreated hypertension. Hmm. Six and a half times more likely to die at a fire if you're over 50. The, the, I mean, we're not very so good. So we at have like about a 1% shot. No of chance at all, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> no chance at all. And, and I gave this presentation uh, last week at the Executive Fire Officer Program, and I had a young firefighter come up and wag his finger in my face and tell me, O'Neill, you're too fat and you're too old to fight fires. The perp and I said, do you, do you know who I am? But the point was that that's what we have to do. Oh, he's right. Okay. He's exactly and, right. Um, the it doesn't mean you still can't serve. I mean, you have I think plenty of opportunities There's tons to, to do. I mean, yeah. guys like you and I could do tons of things in yeah. any volunteer fire company from bookkeeping yep. to, to training, training to, to dispatch to yeah. hundreds of things that don't involve strenuous physical activity under stress. And that's the key. We need to stay off the fire ground. We can even run canteens, make coffee. All of that stuff. I mean, it, it, it's, there's a standard. It's 1582 standard. This was an interesting thing. This is another piece of research. It was done by the American Journal of Cardiology. And then a fella, an EFO student, did the other part of the research. But it talked about the fact that the fire departments hire doctors that don't know anything about our job. Right. And, they, you know, the firefighter who wants to go back to the line, who doesn't want to deal with the truth, says to, to the doctor, well, you know, I'm not going to go in the burning building, I'm not going to wear the gear, I'm only going to drive the truck so the doc signs off. Sure. And, and we need occupational docs who understand 1582, who understand the stresses and strains of the job, who understand the physical exertion, and they're going to be the ones that determine whether you get back on the job or not. I think that's, I think that's absolutely, absolutely critical that we look at that. What else is going on with you, Doc? Anything? Oh, well, um, last year, I can't believe this, the National Fire Academy, in cooperation with all of our partners, the state and training systems, the local training systems, our online training system, we trained 110,000 people in the fire service last year. I do year. that in a week here. I know you do, Bobby. We're not as good as you. We're the government. You know, <laughs> we have a couple of more rules to follow. But um, I was telling this this morning the speech in, in the speech I gave for great the fire administrator Greg Kay that the Treasury Department is thinking about getting rid of the penny because it costs 1.7 cents to manufacture a penny. Mm -hmm. uh, but if they make the nickel the smallest denomination coin in our currency, it costs us a dime to make a nickel. So <laughs> that's true. <laughs> that's true. But uh, no, you you folks are doing a great job. You know what the variety here? I was walking around. My son is here as a firefighter in Jersey City. And uh, we're going to, from class to class, and I'm just showing them different things. What a great group of folks you've got here. Nice you got talk. a panel now that does all that review for you? Yes, sir. 25 different firefighters from all around the country, actually internationally, and we uh, bring them all together. We review all the, we double, we actually double blind review everything. Seven different, everybody's in groups of seven, and then that group is countered by another group of seven. And so it's a. It's so how did I get system. through the filtering process? I, you know, I, nothing's perfect. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, clearly, <laughs> there's a flaw in the system. What a great show! Well, really thank, good show. Thank you, Doc. I appreciate hope the, that. The, hope the Penwell folks realize what you've managed to do. Wow, they're wonderful folks. Okay. Thanks for I'm, asking. I'm reading the magazine. Uh, uh, the editorials that you're writing are on target. Keep up the good work. 
appreciate um, you that. You got some new interesting writers. Um, uh, I see uh, Mark Carter outside. We were talking and and uh, talking about his PA work and his volunteer work. So he's a great guy. Yeah. Yeah. Doc, we know you're busy. We can't thank you enough for filling in for Thanks the for having director. Me, Bobby. We can't thank you enough for teaching for us and being such a good friend. And as always, you know, God bless you and keep you safe. Will you? If I put in a proposal for next year, do you think you could sneak Not it through for me? Not a shot. <laughs> okay. Did you see the reviews from your last one? <laughs> this is Bobby Halton, and we're on the road. Be careful out there. <laughs>